Well, again, good morning, folks. Welcome back to 3Zen. Now I want to begin a uh, new playlist, uh, a playlist that I'm going to entitle Tributes. Uh, these are going to be reflections of men and women who have very, been very prominent in my life, mentoring me and shaping me into the person I eventually became. Uh, I think a lot of these people, as they walk through my mind, uh, I owe so much to them. And I'm so grateful for them, for taking the time and interest in my life. So this first tribute is going to be to a man uh, that I met at Nellis Air Force Base in January 1969, when I was assigned to uh, aerospace munitions in the 430th TAC Fighter Squadron at, at Nellis Air Force Base. His name was Tech Sergeant Leon Jones, and he was the... Uh, Assistant NCOIC, non-commissioned officer in charge of the weapons load section that I had been assigned to. Now, when I showed up that January, uh, brand new second lieutenant, I show up and I am put in charge of a um, uh, section of 105 men. There were men in that section that were old enough to be my grandfather. I'm 22 years old at that time. A brand new second lieutenant, fresh out of school, both uh, college and then uh, six months munition school. So I come walking into the unit, and one of the first things I decided that um, I would do is inspect the troops. I mean, I got 105 guys I need to, to look at, or so I thought. As I sit here and share the story, I'm thinking to myself, what an idiot. But anyway, so I contact Sergeant Jones. And said, told him, I said, tomorrow morning, I'd like to have a open ranks inspection of the troops. You think we can do that? And he kind of looked at his boss, his immediate boss, uh, Master Sergeant uh, Jim Davis, who I'll tell you about in another video. And I caught the look, but I didn't quite understand it. But be that as it may, at 7 o'clock the next morning, he had the guys all lined up in a hangar. At that time... January 1969, we didn't have any airplanes in our squadron. We were just uh, forming up uh, F-111As, and we would get them as they came off the line off uh, down there in um, Fort Worth, Texas. So I get these 105 guys all lined up, and we went through the drill. They commanded open ranks. They opened the ranks, and I began to walk through with the guys, and by and large, they were fine. Oh, what an idiot I was. Anyway. So I said to a couple of them, hey, your hair's getting a little bit long, and this, that, and the other. Okay, fine. So we get through the thing. I didn't think any more about it. Went back into the office. Now, in those days, we had these, uh, in our office, we had these cubicles. And the cubicles uh, had metal stands up maybe four foot, five foot tall. And then they had these little wavy things that went in there to separate the cubicles. So I'm in my cubicle, and I hear Sergeant Jones say to Sergeant Davis, just who the hell does that little snot nose think he is? That would be me. And I went, oh, crap. He says, he's in there giving my troops hell for having long hair, and his hair's going down to his ass. Ooh. And uh, I just, oh, geez. You know, because that, that, no, that was not who I was, but it was how I presented myself at the time. And my God, shades of Niedermeyer came rolling over me. So I grabbed my hat at that time, and I kind of slunkered down, and which is the past tense of slinked, anyway, and snuck out the back door, went over to the uh, Officers Club barber shop, walked in there, and the gal says, uh, uh, how would you like your hair cut? And I said, take it all off, if you don't mind. Just take it right down. I don't care. So she did. She gave me a, a, a buzz haircut, if you will. So I put my hat back on, and uh, after I got my haircut, went back to the squadron, and I went up to Sergeant Jones and uh, in his office, and he stood up, and I said, Sergeant Jones, he said, yes, sir. I took my hat, and I said, I think I meet the standards now. <laughs> this guy turned red. I mean, he knew right away where that had come from. And he turned beet red. 
Now, the interesting thing about this is Tech Sergeant Leon Jones was a full-blooded Cherokee Indian. And to see him turn even more red was quite astounding. But anyway, be that as it may, he saw at that time that I respected him, and I truly did. The guy was just, he was a great guy. And from then on, we formed a bond that was a last a lifetime. Uh, as things go, I lost touch of uh, Sergeant Jones until um, about 1988, 89, somewhere in that area. Uh, managed to make contact with him again through uh, my uh, through Jim Davis. So I contacted him and uh, we laughed about that incident. He still remembered it too. Um, Sergeant Jones had a career in the Air Force. And then when he retired, he went on to become a federal judge in the Cherokee Nation and then later became um, a uh, chief of one of their local tribes here in North Carolina. At any rate, these are people that I am so indebted to because they took an interest in me. They took time and they showed me the ropes, if you will. I had so much fun and I learned so much from Tech Sergeant Leon Jones that I will be forever grateful. So, Leon, um, I know you passed away a few years ago, but uh, Sergeant, rest in peace. Thank you. <laughs>